Well, hello, we are on Digital DJ Tips, YouTube, Twitter, and or not Twitter, what am I talking about? Twitch, uh, and also on YouTube. That means we're live for Thursday Q&A Live. Not only with me, Phil Morse here for the next 45 minutes or so, but also with our good friend, uh, superstar DJ and Digital DJ Tips shooter, Mr. James Hype. James, hello. Hello, Phil. How you doing, man? I'm very good. How are you? Audience, let us know that you can see and hear both James and myself loud and clear, please, because if you can't, we will sort it out instantly. James, welcome. I'm You're good. in Miami. You're there I'm for the good. music I'm week. I'm in Miami, yeah. And um, what time is it there? The, all the music week things are finished, so I'm just catching up on some work before heading back to the UK. In what time is it there, mate? Have we, have we got you out of bed? Yeah, it's 10 a.m. <laughs> 10 a.m. Awesome. Well, uh, well, look, thanks for doing it for us. Um, it's a good time to talk to you, of course, which we'll, we'll get on to. But firstly, how's Miami been? It's your first Miami Music Week, I think. Yeah, it is. It is. Um, it's been intense. I did 15 shows in 14 days. Um, 15 um, shows? Yeah. You must have been the talk of the place. Well, <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> Who else did 15 shows? Who does this, James? Who does this, Phil? Um, yeah, it was it was really good. It was really good. Played to loads of people, um, met loads of people, and yeah, it just uh, I'd do it every week if I could. You, you're struggling to process it all right now, aren't you? It's too close. Pretty it's much, just, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Well, all right. Well, listen. Uh, we know that you've uh, been a hit at Miami because we've been seeing your name and seeing everyone else's socials. We've been seeing Oliver Heldens playing one of your tunes, and that moves me on to the next thing I want to talk to you about. And by the way, everyone watching, if you've got questions for James, ask them in the chat. I've got all the chat coming through on my phone, and we'll be uh, scrolling through those and uh, sharing a few of what you've got to say, things you've got to say with James. But James. Uh, I saw a clip on your Instagram story of Oliver Heldens playing a tune that you wrote. Now, there's a, it's a special tune. There's something very, very special yeah. about it. And it ties in with the fact that we are launching a course that you have made, a production course today here on Digital DJ Tips. So tell us a little bit about this tune. And I'll let people know we made this tune with James over a week in his studio in London. We filmed it all. James explained what he was doing. And that's the basis for James's new course, James Hypes club banger method but james we haven't really spoken since the end of that week and when that finished that tune took on a life of its own didn't it 100 percent, man um yeah we made we made the tune as phil said uh in my studio i sat down for five days and we made the tune from start to finish showed the whole process and then after that i took the tune out into the wild played it in some actual clubs got a good reaction and then randomly I was in the Netherlands with Oliver Heldens and the people who run his record label. And Why I was like, hey guys, would you like to sign this tune? And they were like, hmm, yes, we would. Um, and since then, yeah, the, the record's going to be signed to Oliver Heldens label and Oliver Heldens has been playing it in his sets as well. That's absolutely fantastic to hear. So not only does this course contain a tune that we see you showing people how to make, but that tune's going to be a hit. It looks like it's going to go on and do big yeah, stuff. It's on a, it's on a yeah. big dance label. And, uh, yeah. and it's a great, it's, has it got a proper name yet? No, it hasn't got a final name yet. Okay. It, sounds like it's, it sounds like it's going to be called Deeper Underground, but we'll Deeper see. You know? Well, it would make sense because having heard it, we all know what the lyrics are, which are not far removed from Deeper Underground. So uh, yeah, yeah, cool. Well, it's brilliant to hear, James. So it's amazing that the tune's taken on a life of its own. Uh, so let's talk a little bit about this course that we've made together. So when we decided that we wanted to make another course together, because your DJ course did so well, it's one of our most popular mixing courses. Yeah. Um, you know, it was important to you to make this because your life has got two sides of the coin, right? You know, you don't only DJ, but you make a lot of the tunes that you play. You make a lot of the remixes that you play. Production 100%. is a big part of what you do. And yeah. so you really wanted to make a course that showed people that as well. Um, exactly yeah and we decided to call it james hypes club banger method um because in the end we decided that a good thing to do would be to make a course which was about the music that you want to play in your dj sets not about how to record an album not about how to uh you know record a guitar band or a vocalist or make a pop song how to make a club banger right that was that's what we we decided to exactly do. Yeah, yeah um and so that makes it quite different from the kind of courses other people 
Mike put out there and the kind of production stuff, because I, I feel what you get is, you get the people putting a deconstruction on YouTube, which is like a really cool video. This is how they made, yeah. you know, Firestarter by the Prodigy. And it's great, and you watch it yeah. and you think, wow. But you can't learn anything from that because it's, it's all over. Or you get yeah. people yeah, giving yeah. you like really boring production training where it's just bleh, bleh, bleh. and at the end of it, there's nothing. So like, th there doesn't seem to be this bit in the middle where you're shown everything and yeah. what you get is what you want, which is a club banger, right? Yeah, that makes sense, yeah. Um, and so we did it. We got in the studio and we did it. And we all learned a lot. I think uh, we can all say that. You know, you, even you were amazed think, at how yeah. quickly, when, when, when we had a camera on you, you didn't have your phone, how quickly you could yeah, produce. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but also, we, we, were, um, you know, we were blown over by what we got out of you. And the fact that you had time to turn to the camera and discuss and every little thing you did with us until I was happy and I'm not the brightest, you know, until I understood what you were talking about. Um, so we've got this course and it's, it's basically you going through your whole process. Let's talk about your process because um, there's lots of things you do to make club bangers, which is different to how other producers would work. And the yeah. first thing I want you to yeah. talk about is samples, is using samples. Talk to people a bit about how, why that's important and, and, and the kind of dirty secret of producers well, if we start if we start making a record by using samples, then straight away we kind of someone's someone's done a part of the job for you. You know, someone's already sat there and played all the sounds on the synthesizer to find like the coolest ones, or is already a vocal that someone's recorded that you know is going to be like quite cool. There's something about it. As, as well, you can use samples that people may have heard before, so it could be like a little bit of familiarity before you've even started. And so. It's not so much getting the samples as what you do with them next, right? Because anyone can That's just right. go grab a big sample. And the trouble with Splice and Loop Masters is, it's like the trouble with tracks for your DJ sets. Everyone can get them. So yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. there's a lot in the course where you're talking about on showing ways of taking stuff and then turning it into something that's totally unrecognizable. Exactly. Um, and not only doing that, but making that the basis of your track. Yeah. So. Um, and let me tell everyone watching this, you know, James, we've seen James drag crowd noises into, into synthesizers and turn it into the lead part of a track, you know, and those crowd noises were taken straight from a sample bank. Yep. You know, you really use the sample bank really creatively. Um, and in the course, you see James using Splice and he gives you three ways to take something out of Splice that everyone else has got. And by the end of it, don't sound like anything anyone else has got. It's something really original. Um, Cool, all right, so samples are a big thing. Another thing we took away from working with you is we went to work in the studio together, but we end up behind the decks, like on day three or something. <laughs> Testing your track early Testing. on the deck, on the decks. Yep. Something that you do that I bet, I bet a lot of producers don't, and certainly a lot of people watching would think, why would you take a half finished track? But it's yeah, important, yeah, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, 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 just to show you how, to show you what's right and show you what's wrong and give you a different perspective on it. And so we did it in a, um, in a uh, like your live streaming studio, but you've done it yeah. in front of crowds as well, right? Oh well, yeah, yeah, yeah. But like, it's almost preferable to do it in front of a crowd, you know? It's kind of see if it connects with the people in the way that you're hoping it will do, you know? Mm. And in the course, we, we, we kind of figured out quite quickly that uh, there were big structural things nearly changing in the tune. Yeah. And, and if you don't do that, if you don't get it, played away from the studio you might spend weeks fixing the wrong things right is that is that part of the thinking yeah that's true it's quite easy to fall in love with something in the studio and then it doesn't like translate anywhere else so yeah it's important to break yourself out of that sort of safe space when you're being critical yeah that makes perfect sense um right people we are here talking to james about his uh new course uh this is james's club uh, banger method it's a brand new dj course that's been released uh today it's not a dj uh, course sorry production course of course uh that's been released today there is the url on the screen now thank you for the correction there james of course um and this is available on the digital dj tips side via that link so james is with me live to talk about some of the things that you learn in the course and some of the ways the course shows you different ways of producing to the ways you you might think it should be done and specifically for making club bangers right james um, That's should right. We, should we get a few hellos from the uh, from the the live just to say hello to a few people? Um, yeah, sure. 
So I'll read you out a few of them. So it's just, um, I'll just say a few of the early hellos. Ian, Benedict, GM, all our local crew, welcome uh, as our, our regulars. House in town. Uh, let's read something out here. So this is from Ian who says, I'm really looking forward to this one. Are the basics covered in the course as well? As I'm just beginning to look at creating tracks and I've got no musical experience. James. Sorry, Phil, could you repeat that? Yeah, the basics. Are we covering the very, very basics in the course? Um, depends on your definition of basics. Like we, we kind of expect that when you enter into this course, you've probably already tried to make a couple of tunes. You've probably already got your head around how you drag drums into the into the door, how you put a put a bass sound from splice into the door. So we're not covering the very entry level basics. And this is important to, to know people because James doesn't say this is a door, this is what this does, this is what that does. It's like you have to have figured all this out for yourself. Otherwise, there's no chance of you learning how to make a pro track from someone like James because he's too busy explaining the real basics. You know, your software comes with loads and loads of tutorial videos made by the manufacturers. And unless you've gone through those and you've, you've, you've literally hit export and you've got an MP3 you made yourself that you can play in your DJ sets, unless you've done that before to whatever standard and then thought, hmm, I'd like to do that a bit better. You're going to need to do that work before you take this course. Doesn't mean you can't take the course, right, James? It just means you've got to do no, that no, work additionally. No, like, the, 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 early, the early ways of learning your way around the door and things doesn't, it won't take you very long if you've used a computer before. Mm -hmm. So, but, but, but you're expected to bring that. And actually, early on in the course, it says that quite clearly, doesn't it? You know, this is what we expect you to bring. Yep. Um, another question here for you then, James, which is from Benedict, who says, how do you come up with ideas for new songs, since that is the one thing that I struggle with? Um, I would say my inspiration normally comes from the dance floor. So maybe just go and hang out in a club and see what excites you and see if you can make something that captures that same energy. Hmm. And it's, uh, again, it's uh, something that you cover in the course quite well because you, you start off with a track or, t track or two that you quite like to sound like. You know, I want it to sound something like this or that. And so yeah. at least you've got a template. That actually moves us on to the third thing I wanted to, to, to raise, the, the way you make club bangers, which is different to the way um, some people might yeah. produce, which is you always have comparison tracks. You always have like two or three tracks that you've picked, maybe one of your own, maybe a couple that you respect that are similar to what you're trying to make, similar vibe. And they can change as you're making the track. You know, halfway through, you might say, actually, I'm going to pick a different one now. But you're never trying to make a track in a vacuum. You've always got something that's on the vibe you're trying to make. So talk yeah, to people right, about yeah. why, why that's important. Um, it's easy to kind of go down the rabbit hole and think that your song is amazing when you've got no boundaries of how other, how other songs sound. Um, if you start off with one or two of these other finished records that you already know sound great in your project, then you can always go back to them and think, oh, maybe my hi-hat was very, very quiet compared to this one over here. Um, and those, those little details need to be consistent in order for your track to feel right alongside mm. these professional ones. So you don't want to get to the end of your production and find out that, you know, there's something that you could really easily have spotted earlier on if only you'd stuck another track in and yeah. done the DJ thing, cross faded between yeah. them and said, you know, does yeah. this sound exciting? So here's a question for you from uh, You Don't Like My Music. I've always liked this guy's name. Uh, you Don't Like My Music says, Hi, James, what's your favourite piece of music production gear or are you strictly a software guy? Um, I'm strictly software um, don't use any hardware for this, well, for any of my music, to be honest. And why um, is that? Why is that, James? Give people the reason for, for, for why that's your preference. I taught myself to make music in like 2000 and something teen, you know? <laughs> so like, we don't need any of that stuff, you know? That's like saying, why don't you, why don't you DJ with vinyls? Well, I could do, but it's just there's, there's newer technology available. Um, okay. And and you know, there, it, sure there are, you sure know there some are people say, I, I, I can't get inspired in front of a computer. I need, no, I just want to touch stuff and turn knobs and play with stuff. And I could, but that doesn't affect you. That's not the way 
you, you have no I, I i love using ableton because i can see the audio visually so it just reminds me of dj okay so it's actually being able to see the bits of audio it's just like looking at your dj yeah, software yeah. cool well that's a, that's a cool way of looking at it um our next uh comment is from ryan who says i think i might buy the club banger course it looks very professional oh there we go thumbs up for you there, I, would, mate. I would say it is definitely professional like yeah we there's a lot of there's a lot of info in there and it's presented really well you know you won't get lost uh pj swinning says will you implement the will smith slap into any drops on a new mix i think we'll just leave <laughs> just leave that one hanging there right I feel like i'm a bit late already on that i've seen so many uh so many so many memes i know i know you can't do anything nowadays uh, <laughs> so dave says yo james what studio headphones do you recommend i have sure iems but they're far too colorful and they're not for monitoring um what studio headphones do you recommend james um i have a pair of um Bayer dynamic i can't remember what they're called but they're big like furry ones and they're um they're nice just because they're nice to wear over a long period of time to be honest, I don't really like making music in headphones. I don't really enjoy it as much. Uh, but if I had to, I'd sit with a pair of them. It's important, isn't it? Because it's different to DJ headphones. DJ headphones yeah. is all about isolation and about yeah. uh, volume, you know, yeah. being comfortable around your neck as much as on your ears because yeah, that's yeah. where they live. But with production, a lot of them are open. So you've got to be in a yeah. quiet room. And that's to mm -hmm. keep your ears cool. And so it's a different kind of headphone, isn't it? I mean, you can use your DJ headphones. They're a good start, yeah, right? But People do. Yeah. Um, so Craig says, how much sleep does James Hype get? Uh, he's never, he's everywhere and he never seems to stop. Uh, what no, do you I, do? I do get, I do get seven to eight hours a night. What do you do to chill away from DJing? Says Craig. Um, don't say producing. <laughs> um, don't really have an answer, you know, just hang out <laughs> with my girlfriend. There you go. Play with your dog or her dog. Right, so uh, uh, Mick Mikulish says, hey James, lots of DJs on Reddit surprisingly say that transitions aren't important, is a DJ question. Only song selection. Um, you are a master of amazing transitions, so why are they so important to you? <laughs> um, why are they so important to me? Well, Spotify plays records, you know? Spotify and plays free. records. <laughs> so, um, yeah, no, obviously selection is super important and it always will be. Um, but the transitions of the sauce, they're how you do it. It's like if you're a chef, the ingredients are the selections and the presentation and the preparation is the transitions, you know. It's kind of the um, icing on the cake, but it's a pretty large spread of icing isn't it you know yeah, it's a lot of icing <laughs> yeah it's a lot of icing yeah um so ryan says i have the uh the launch pad with ableton light i have some good loops going i'd like to learn how to make better build-ups and breakdowns and i'd also like to learn serum which is the soft synth that uh it's very popular right now for people who don't know that is this going to be good for ryan would you say james it's really good for ryan it's really good for ryan because we're using ableton which you already know your way around because you know how to build loops and things in there. We're using Serum, like Serum is the go-to synth for this for this whole course, you know? Um, and we're gonna take it from building loops into making a finished track. So basically it's right up your street. Um, yeah. One of the big problems DJs have when they go into the studio and start producing is they've got a DJ's frame of mind, right? So DJs know what, what a groove sounds like, they know what a nice vibe is yeah. and they can get like a loop but turning that loop into a finished song, this is not something us DJs know much about. So yeah, when yeah, DJs yeah. try and produce, this is where they get stuck. And there's a lot in your course where you um, talk about that, right? Part of your method mm. is is not starting with just a loop. It's starting with a exactly. bit more than that. Yeah, 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 yeah. So we won't reveal all that here, people. You need the course for that, uh, which is what we're talking about. Underneath us, the DJ tips.co slash james hype link will take you to james's brand new course which is on the screen now uh, and you can see the video that james has made explaining what it's all about it's really cool we're really proud of it glad to have it out finally it launches today with a special offer so do go check it out um, so ronald says thank you for being such an inspiration to old and new jocks you're a dope soul thank you ronald um uh 
Tunes Only has got a quote, which uh, I'm, I'm sure you'd like to answer, but I can't read it out on a, on a live broadcast, unfortunately. So uh, there we go. Um, the next question I'll answer quickly, James, from Axim. Is there a discount for people who own the James Hype Mixing Skills course? Yep, 35% off, not only for you, but for everyone, as long as you buy it in the next few days. So head to that URL. Uh, so here's a rave from the grave, Treo's memory. Graham Park used to play cassette tapes in the Hacienda of tracks that 808 State would have recorded earlier that night. Um, so there we go. It's been going on for years, James. Mad. Mad. Um, as if you didn't know that already, of course. Uh, so, uh, right, let's move on with our five things we're talking about here, which is five things, uh, secrets, of producing club bangers that might surprise people. So number four, I've written down this just because it's a word that came up when we were um, in the studio together. So I've, I've kind of tongue in cheek written the word Beethoven, uh, which basically means you don't have to be Beethoven to write club bangers, right? Um, no, no, n nothing of the sort. If you if you really deconstruct some of our favourite like bangers, they're not even melodic at all. Some of them are even some of the tunes I've made that have been successful have even been like out of tune in parts and stuff because they're they're not supposed to be pretty and melodic. They're just supposed to be literally what Phil said, bangers. And so if you're not thinking uh, along the lines of which chord progressions go well together and is this harmonically working and do I need to understand pentatonic scale in order to do something here and all that? I mean, let's not be, let's not, let's not lie about this. This is all good stuff to know. It's like, it's great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But certainly when it comes to this kind of music, it is something that can help you as you, as you develop, but it's almost like something that musical people reverse engineer into tracks, right? And they say, oh, no, this track's got, it's, it's got a pentatonic scale and it's in A minor and stuff. But the producer never, never knew that. It's almost like it's stuff that's, yeah. Yeah, it yeah, will yeah, help yeah. you when you're analyzing music. And of course, as you move on, it's good to learn as much as you can about it, but it shouldn't hold you back. Yeah, that's true. Um, so, um, the ruckus, I don't think I have the creativity to produce. I may come up with something, but I think the next would sound like the first. In other words, the ruckus is thinking that anything I come up with is going to sound either like something else or like everything else I come up with. He's going to make the same thing over and over again. Yeah. Is this something that you felt at the beginning, James, or that people have said to you over the years? You know, is this something you've heard no, I've before? Never, it's not, not something I've ever, uh, I've ever like been afraid of when I first started out making music i was just making bootlegs and i was just editing other people's records so it never i never really had that that thought process it's interesting because though, isn't there's it? so there's so many there's so many great starting points for records when you get into splice and the sample libraries then you'll find there's so many amazing starting points for tunes i don't think it's something that you you'd really struggle with and the thing is, the, the tip there is to start doing exactly as what, what James has just said, start making bootlegs and re-edits and changing stuff that already exists. And one thing that I thought was really revealing, James, when we were working together, uh, you said at one point, I think you were changing the kick drum on the track and you said, you know, this track knows what it wants to be now and therefore it needs a different kick because it's not the kind of kick that a track like this would have. Um, and yeah. you, there's this sense that the track's taken on a life of its own and you're just guiding it. Um, which means that once you've got started, there's the hard bit done, right? And then, and then that's anyone true, can that's take true. it. That's true, yeah. Just the flow keeps on taking itself where it needs to. Yeah. Ryan says, thank you, James. I've significantly improved my skills by watching you. Uh, so that's cool. Good to know. Thank nice you for go, that, Ryan. Ryan. Uh, and then I saw a great one from someone who's actually taken the course a second ago, but it, uh, there's so many comments coming in here, James they're scrolling past way too quickly for me to see them, which is a good thing, of course. And by the way, we will get to you on the social channels afterwards with any answers to questions. It was from Paul who said, I've just purchased it and I like it up to now. I've been producing two years now, but I still haven't produced a decent track as yet. Hopefully I will get good ideas from this. It's definitely for it Paul, like isn't Paul it? is the perfect person for this course. You're literally who, who this has been made for. Paul. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so it's really exciting to know that you've done that. Um, so... Um, Tunes Only uh, has a, another comment which I can't read out. It's lovely to see that we've got comments here which are, you know, on the edge, because let's face it, we're not accountants. Um, what are you doing, James? We can see your biceps. <laughs> Blowing my nose. You're back. 
Um, so uh, let's get one or two more of these questions then, because there are so many. Um, and this is just a question about you and your touring. Um, and it's from Baywav, who says, um, questions from DJ Baywav from San Fran. Your show was just announced in the Bay Area. How do you prepare your DJ sets when you're visiting a new city or a new country? Do you try to incorporate local music? Sometimes do. I do sometimes do. Not too much. Uh, music's very global these days. But I do sometimes try to incorporate local music, especially in places where there's a lot of people who don't speak English. Um, obviously, with Bay Area, there's a lot of great local music, but also a lot of people speak English there. So I know that they're going to listen to a lot of the same music that people listen to around the rest of the United States and in the UK. Um, for example, when I was playing in Brazil, the first show I ever did in Brazil, I tried to get as much music in there from Brazilian artists that I had in my library as possible. Because so I was like, yeah, hopefully the, hopefully the crowd responds well to this because they'll know it. Yes, work, but yeah. And did it work? Yeah, I think it did, yeah. Okay, so certainly different cultures and different languages might be worth having a look. Um, this is from Alexander. It's a good question. Um, it, is it okay to start with Logic over Ableton for music production? What are the benefits of using Ableton? Let's say right now this course is produced with Ableton, but if you know your way around your door, which is a prerequisite for taking this course, it doesn't matter what door you're using. Half the time, James has exactly. got plugins that work, for, work, work with everything anyway, you know, and that's where the, where the yeah. work's happening. But um, is it okay to start with Logic over Ableton and what are the benefits of Ableton in your view, James? Yeah, it's fine to start with logic. Like every every door is as capable as the next. Um, they just do the same thing in different ways. Um, I I actually uh, I use Ableton predominantly, and I used Ableton right throughout this course. But I do own Logic, and I do sometimes use it for for other parts of the process. You know. Um, let's move on and do our fifth of our uh, five tips here for um, producing club bangers. And the four we've done so far are use samples, test early. Um, Compare to other tracks, A, B, test it. Um, don't worry too much about music and key and chords and stuff. It's more about sounds and feel. And the final one, uh, which is something that um, right from the very first minute we started making this course with you was obvious, is um, start and maintain momentum when you're producing. Momentum. Don't get stuck in the doldrums. Keep the movement, keep the momentum. Yeah. Um, why is this important? And a couple of tips for doing it. Well, I think when you start out making a track, you're going to have this idea in your head of what it what it's going to be, um, and over time, you'll lose track of where where it needs to go in order to be finished. Um, so, I think the faster the faster you work through it, the more likely you are to get like the initial idea out. Um, also, once you start kind of finishing things, it just becomes a routine and. The more things you finish, the better the things you finish are going to be. So it's really a case of not chasing perfection, right? Exactly, yeah, because if you chase perfection, you'll just end up redoing everything a thousand times. And the track that could have taken you four days, as we saw when we were making this course, will end up taking four months. Mm. Uh, so a couple of tips, James, for actually achieving that. Um, Use presets and modify the presets as opposed to trying to create all of your sounds from, from nothing. Um, say, use samples mm -hmm. so, that we'll cover that, things, so that you can find things quickly. Yeah. Um, and... Don't give, too much away. Don't give too much away, but yeah, keep, keep going because it's no, all in the like, course. Like, like yeah. kind of know your software so you know your way around it. You know, like this is, this is important, thing. isn't it? Get set up. Don't be don't don't be figuring stuff out halfway through. You know, yeah. it's like about getting everything ready that you're going to need, so that when you come to produce, that's what you're doing. You're not you're not doing everything yeah. else. By the way, James, I know I've gone completely fuzzy on your screen, but Great. it's not it's not it's not the live one. Um, and in fact, I've got <laughs> a. Um, you won't see this, James, on the on the Zoom call, but I've got a um, piece of paper that people could download from the internet, and I really, really recommend this to a lot of our students. Go and search for the Cult of Done, the Cult of Done manifesto, and download this piece of paper. You can get it on Google Images and print it out and stick it by your 
decks to keep by your DJ or production equipment or anything creative. It's a great thing to have. Uh, right, so, um, Right, well, we've covered the five things we wanted to cover here, James. We've covered the fact that your course has just come out. The link is underneath for it. If you want to work out how James makes club bangers uh, and watch him actually making one. And in fact, James, there was a question or rather, uh, yes, it was a question from someone that I just saw pop in then, which uh, from Izzy, actually. So thanks for this, Izzy, who says, what makes this course far more powerful than any other? Big ups on your number one on Beatport. Has Izzy just well, answered his own question or her own question? Uh, <coughs> this is a producer who is number one on Beatport. This isn't a producer who works for Ableton or who you know had a hit in 1994. Um, but what else makes it more powerful maybe than some of the um, other production training? The out fact that we're working through a real record on the course, like, and the, the, I don't, I've never seen what we've done here done before. Like we made a record completely for the course and that record has now been signed and it's supported by Oliver Heldens. Now I've seen people who've done, done breakdowns of tunes that they've made previously. I've seen that. And then I've also seen people make a course and make a song for the course that goes nowhere. But I've never seen anyone actually make a record completely on the course, which then goes on to be a good record. It's, we talked about it earlier, didn't we? We said it's, you know, we, we, this was actually a moment in time, really, because let me just tell the story. Um, we, we, we said to you, we don't mind if you want to prepare something beforehand and talk us through it. And we also said, equally, we're happy to, you know, we, tr we trust that we'll be able to come up with something that week. We turn up on Monday morning and you're like, right, well, well we're going for the second option. We're starting from scratch. And you actually were like, well, you know, it's good that we're making this course, but I'm, I'm really busy, lads. And if it wasn't for this, I could be making something in the studio this week. And it turns out that we end up making something in the studio this week <laughs> in like a quarter of the time it would normally take because none of us are on our phones or distracted. And, uh, and it gets signed. So, you, yeah, you couldn't write this stuff, could you? It's, uh, it was a Cheers. brilliant week. Um, and so that's what makes it different. The fact that you're seeing a real top of his game producer making a genuine track which gets signed and released and is shortly to be a hit. Uh, and you see it uh, literally from opening a sample library and saying, where are we going to start? And James had no idea what he was going to write that week. Um, the whole thing is not only recorded and turned into modules and lessons, but James explains everything. And where he doesn't, I say, James, stop, tell us. And so between us and James, there's nothing that gets left on the table. You see it all. And not only that, you understand it all. So like you say, what we've got here is pretty unique. Um, it's called James Hype's Club Banger Method. Uh, if you click the link there on the screen, you will go to the page that I've just put up. And James has a three or four minute video where he explains it. And you can also see the curriculum. You can see the module layout. You can see what you're going to learn. You can learn about everything that you need. You can see comments from students of previous James courses. Pretty much everything you need to make a decision about whether this is right for you. Uh, James, I think, uh, I think we should let you go off and get yourself a second coffee. And uh, All right, mate get started um i just want to give a few more shout outs then to people who are uh just saying hello so hi to kevin and seb and gems trips says oi oi james hype the main man on the cdj 3000s with an awful lot of them let's go <laughs> uh, and uh, hi to dark dice and to rahil um and to robert uh who says yeah okay let's just end up with a good question here from robert who says what door are you using james well we've answered that but he then says is it worth dropping 4K on a new Mac studio? Um, and let's seriously talk about what computer you need to take your course and to start producing, James, because people think they need to do that. Um, is that true? Personally, I'd rather have a laptop anyway. But, uh, <laughs> but yeah, um, no, you don't, need, you don't need a particularly powerful computer for music. It's not like video editing, you need a lot more capability, but with, all you're doing is manipulating a couple of musical sounds. It's not as... CPU intensive is trying to do some other things. Um, you don't need a crazy computer as long as you're meeting the minimum specifications for Ableton and Serum, which are two of the tools we're using in the course, then I'm sure you'll be fine. You could, you know, the, the, the current, not only the Mac M1 
computers, which should go, even goes down to the Mac, MacBook Air M1, uh, and, and mm. the modern Intel Windows computers. They're all fine for this. And in the course, James shows you how to, and you don't even need that power. I'm just saying, you know, if you were to go and buy one today, a base one would be fine. Um, but James shows you in the course all the methods for keeping your CPU, you know, happy. Uh, freezing yeah. tracks and bouncing to audio and all this kind of stuff, which is what producers do all the way through when they're making music anyway, even with powerful computers, because at some point you need to do this stuff. So you'll learn, you'll be shown how to keep your computer ticking over nicely. Um, and it just turns, so turns out that this is normally quite a good idea anyway when you're producing because it keeps yeah, that yeah, momentum yeah. going, right? Yep, um, exactly. So, um, and Rahil says, Serum uses only a single CPU, so it will die on any processor, no matter how powerful it is when you're using insane voicing and stuff. So, True. Um, so there we go. Right. I didn't know that was why, though. Oh, and now you do. So you, I'll it's tell you one thing, James. the programming of it. That's I'll tell you one thing I've learned from doing these live shows for years. You always learn something. Yeah. on a live show from the students. It's brilliant. Yeah. You always learn something. Someone always makes you walk away smarter than when you walked in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, you, were saying, you were saying to me, you know, um, where does the authority come in a school? And I, I remember when we were together and I said, it's because we've spent 10 years working with people who are smarter than us and it all sinks in <laughs> and then we can share it, you know. So it's, thank yeah. you very much for that, for that, um, for sharing that with us. Uh, it's uh, it's awesome. Thank you, Rahil. Right, people, we're going to say uh, goodbye to James now. James, any final words on your course before we let you go and uh, get your second coffee? Just watch, watch the video, and the the video gives you a really good insight as to what's what happens in it. And yeah, just know it's all completely real and honestly shocked us all when we were putting it together that it came out so well. <laughs> it did, didn't it? Uh, all right. Well, James, thank you very much for coming. Uh, I'll get back if you've thank got you a minute. Phil. Hang around. And I'll jump back on and, uh, and, and chat to you in two seconds. But I just want to say goodbye to our awesome community here. So listen, thank you, everyone, for joining us. The link below, djtips.co slash James Hype. If you wanted to ask another question, uh, you know, because normally a Thursday session is an open house, then just come uh, next Thursday and I promise you we'll have a full open house next Thursday. But we wanted to give this one over to James because the course has just gone live and we're all really excited about it for all the reasons you just heard. So you can go and have a look on the digital DJ tips link there, djtips.co slash James Hype underneath me. James Hype teaches production and he'll tell you exactly what's in the course there. Uh, but meanwhile, for me, Phil here in the studio, get good, get out there, make the moments, everyone, and I'll see you again very soon. Until next time, bye-bye.